ethical hacker the word sounds very interesting i have seen many people coming up to me and saying you are an ethical hacker wow that's great can i have a selfie with you but this goes negative at times i remember an event where i was delivering an interview to one of the media channel where anchor started questioning how a hacker can be ethical it is as good as saying ethical murderer ethical criminal ethical hacker so i learned it's always better to call yourself as information security expert rather than using the typical word ethical hacker <laughs> many countries including india and other nations in asia many countries in europe many countries in us everyone follows something known as cyber law of their particular nation and majority of these countries don't have any term ethical hacker for the good people right there is a term used for a criminal but there is no term as ethical hacker right so you have to be under the guidelines of cyber law of any particular nation now let me put an eye on what is the difference between ethical and unethical hacker i remember an incident when i was working for one of the cyber crime department where we received a case related to hacking of one of the very big website and that website actually belongs to one of the education industry and when you resolve that website the home page sees a very weird message written by some other country right it was hacked so this is what unethical hacking activity is about uh, if you know the most recent case especially in uh, some of the asian countries there was one biggest bank hacking happened in india right 94 crore money rupees were illegally transferred out right this is what unethical hacking activity is about now what is the job of an ethical hacker one of the project we were working upon was security of one of the government website so our, our job was to hack into that website we got the official permission to hack into it but after hacking i am not damaging and destroying that website what i am trying to do is i am trying to find all the vulnerabilities on the website and then i am intimating the officers over there that these are the bugs please patch it up else any unethical hacker may hack it in the similar fashion so i come in the category of ethical hacker you can see both the hackers have got the same job but is the difference of your intention what you are doing after hacking damaging destroying or protecting and reporting and that's where you are going to get placed into unethical or ethical hacking let's flash back a little where uh, how i began my journey into ethical hacking industry of course unlike any other uh, profile i began my journey at a very early stage i was hardly 16 year old when i actually entered into this industry where i was just sitting online on whole whole day where we were online on the internet just playing online games anyone remember road rash yes during my school time and in order to win the game against my opponent i used to surf internet where i always try to find out some kind of cheat codes if i get it and i can win the game and you know there was a very famous cheat code by just by typing i realized x y z z y i can actually unlock some of the things inside that game it was very exciting exciting and fascinating me so this is how i actually got connected to some of the very big online ethical hacking forums and unethical hacking forums as well where i was a part of these communities where many big hackers used to come deliver their skill sets show their researches and this is how i started learning out uh, something about the hacking part now because of this my education got hampered i was hardly in a standard where my percentage from 70% dropped down to 50% and like any other typical mom my mother used to come and say i will throw this tv outside tv for her means computer desktop i remember an event where i i somehow like got the dear and i spoke to my father dad ye padhai wadai mujhse nahi hogi i don't like to study i want to be a hacker i remember the face of my dad sharma ji ka beta doctor banega right mehta ji ka beta engineer banega मेरा बेटा क्या बनेगा हैकर चोर राइट सो बट समहाउ थिंग्स वेंट वेल 
and um, uh, there were many such incidents where one good day I actually found out a vulnerability on where one of the very biggest SMS gateway which was running at that time. It was the year 2005, 2006, where I got a vulnerability using which I can use anyone's cell phone number to send SMS to anyone. So imagine a scenario where your cell phone number is being used to send SMS to your friend. I remember many mischiefs activity which I did uh, sending SMS to your friend from his crush mobile number, right? I like you. <laughs> then one, one other incident when I sent a message to my best friend father's number from principal's ID uh, mobile number that your son is terminated from the school, right? <laughs> but somehow uh, I realized like uh, this is what unethical hacking activity is. So somehow we have to jump into the ethical part of this particular environment. Now I actually want to display over here where how, how you can actually hack into anyone's system. Now the word which I used, how you can hack into anyone's system is because we should be aware how hacker works so that we can defend ourselves, right? So I'm going to give this as an example of physical world. Imagine a scenario where Suppose I want to hack anyone's computer from my laptop. So it's kind of a scenario where in physical world, you want to beat someone, right? Suppose I ask person A that you have to beat person B. So what person A will do? He will start gathering the information of his target before attacking him, right? So the first information he will ask is, what is the name of the person? I'll say his name is person B. Then he will gather some more information, how well built he is. It should not be like uh, I went to beat him and he only, right? Then he will gather some more information, what he does, is he a VVIP person? Is he having bodyguards with him? Is he carrying any weapon, knife or revolver with him? Once he gathers all the sufficient information, it is very easy to plan an attack and he can successfully beat the guy. The same applies in the virtual world environment, but in virtual world, I'm not going to get the name of the person of my target. What I want is the IP address of my victim of my target, right? So every computer connected to internet is assigned with a very unique IP address. I am connected to internet right now, so I will be assigned with a unique IP address. And unique IP means that IP belongs only to me and entire world at this point of time. Huh, maybe if I disconnect the internet, reconnect it, a new IP address will be allotted to me. But at that particular point of time, again, the new IP will belong only to me in the entire world. That will be my unique IP. So the first information which I need is finding IP address of my target. Once I get the IP address, the second information which I need is finding operating system of my target. My target is using Windows OS, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, or something else, right? So how can I get someone's IP address? Let's find this out. I want your eye on the presentation screen so that I can display you things live. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm opening a very simple website, google.com. And you can see I just typed google.com and Google is on over here. But when I resolve google.com, I see on the left bottom, it's written Google India. Google is aware I am in India right now. How Google is aware I am in India? It's because of my IP address, which is recorded by Google. Just by visiting any of the website, like what is my IP address? I can see my IP is something like 49 dot something something, which belongs to Geo, the current location, India. This IP is recorded by Google and Google has seen a person from India visited. So it has given me customized Indian version of the website. I went to some other nation and I opened google.com connecting to their Wi-Fi. So I got a different IP address of that particular country. And when I opened google.com, it was showing me their country name. So Google is recording my IP. Now the big question is who has given Google the permission to record my IP? Let me tell you one very interesting thing. It is not just Google. 
any website which you visit on the internet records your IP, whatsoever website it is. Let it be yahoo.com, let it be facebook.com, let it be google.com, or let it be any other website. So, in order to get the IP address of my friend, what I can do is, if you see, I have a very good website over here, rizwanonline.com, I have all the photos rolling over here. Nice Photoshop by my development team. So, this website, what I will do, I will send this website link to my friend. And as soon as the person clicks on the link, the first thing I will get is his IP address because every website records IP, even my website does. Now let me show you another such website which I open, which has IP logger in it. Let me quickly open the website visitor.somethingsomething.com. I press the enter button. I open this website. It has nothing but simple 411 written over here. This is my website. I can host any photo over here. I can host any video. Now since I visited my website myself, my IP log will be recorded by it. So let me log into the control panel of my website to see what are the visitor logs. And when I open this at the bottom line, I see a visitor on 30th January, that is today's day, today time, this IP visitor has visited the site and the person is using Mac OS operating system and he opened the website on Safari web browser. So you can imagine it is not just the IP, but any website which you visit indirectly fetch your operating system, your web browser details as well, right? Understand the countermeasures simultaneously. If you click on any single link sent by any unknown, untrusted source, it reveals all your information, right? So what's next? What after revealing this out? And information gathering, let me come on the stage again to explain you. So when I talk about website fetching your information. It's like entire world is stealing each other's information and let me tell you, it is not just IP address, so indirectly they know your ISP location, city, country, state, but also they record your operating system, your web browser details, and many other details by the cookie they insert in your system. They know about your preference, your search history, your browsing, and so many other details. So we overall might be a bit worried about like how this actually works in the global world environment. You visit any single website and you reveal all your information. So where is the privacy? As I said, every country in the world runs on their cyber law. And there is a very big issue when you compare cyber law with technology. They don't like each other. What I just said is cyber law and technology don't like each other. On what points? I'll tell you. There are two things. Number one, geolocation. Number two, evolution. When I say the word geolocation, it means geographical location. If you know, law is territory bounded. India's law is different from Pakistan's law, right? China's law is different from Japanese laws. So law is territory bounded. But over the internet, you don't have any geographical boundary. You can open a website hosted in US data center, running their business only in China. By sitting in India, you can just open your Google Chrome browser and you can type the domain name. You don't require visa and passport to access that website, right? So some things are legal in some countries, whereas it is illegal in some other country. For example, gambling. It is legalized in some of the countries over the internet. In some countries, it is illegal. So what happens in gambling? Usually, people are running those websites across the world. All they did is they hosted the website in some data center, which is based in the country where it is legal, right? So geographical boundary comes into picture. Evolution, when I talk about the word evolution, evolution means upgradation or modification. Law never changes, law always gets amended, that is upgraded. You know how much time it takes to upgrade a single law? It takes ages, right? You know, some good people sitting in your center, 51%, it, it takes ages to add a single law. How much time it takes to upgrade technology? Hardly anything. So technology is upgrading at a very fast pace, whereas law is upgrading at same old pace. And there are so many technologies in place which don't have any law made for it. So it is not regulated as of now, right? And that's how the biggest advantage is taken by unethical hackers. I'm going to display you another demonstration where I will be showing you out how easy it is for any unethical hacker to hack into your private data. Now suppose the hacker got the access of your private information like your IP address, OS and other details. Now the next thing he will do is he will use a simple Trojan and will send it to you in your either over email, over any website, over messenger. 
And all hacker wants it, if you install that Trojan in your system once, your entire system is hacked. Let me show you a very small demonstration. I have a cell phone with me right now of my colleague kept over here. And this young guy has given his cell phone in which I have installed a small APK file which belongs to Android. And let me see what all data I am fetching from his cell phone. Let's go on the screen again. So we developed this tool known as Pristine Spy which fetches the information. I am just logging to the cell phone panel and I can see these are the information which I fetched from his cell phone just by installing a single APK file which, which is hardly 12 KB of size. If you see on the left hand side I can see call logs. When I click on the call log button I can actually see all his incoming, outgoing and missed calls data. Along with date, time, duration, how many seconds he has spoken to, right? And I can see a call made by my friend at night 2 a.m. which runs for two hours and the number doesn't belong to his girlfriend. Now he's saying no, this number is actually of one of my good friends. So I have an option over here with the name call recordings using which I can actually hear all the recordings as well. It is not only call logs. Of course, I'm not displaying everything on the screen, but I can actually hear. SMSs. I can actually read each and every messages inbox out. I can see his recharge is over. Please recharge your phone. And I can actually find it out, all the information, right? Contact book. This option allows me to steal all his contacts, all the female contacts in his cell phone, right? I, okay, but talking about something severe, when it comes to the corporate world environment, I have an option over here with the name mic recorder. This option actually allows me to start the recording of his cell phone and I can actually hear it live without actually switching on his cell phone. The cell phone is kept idle, but I can actually switch on and I can hear what he's talking, what is happening in the neighbor. Location tracking gives an live location on Google map. And then there's so many other ex uh, options to hack into WhatsApp and all as requested by my friend. I'm not going to display it online, but every information can be recorded. I can switch on the video camera of his cell phone. I can turn on and I can actually start recording the surroundings and so many other details. You can imagine the small APK file can do such a big damage. So this raises a question to every one of us. Like we are actually worried to know how exactly danger world we are living into. This virtual world is very dangerous. If we don't take appropriate countermeasures, if we don't know the cyber hygiene techniques, definitely we can be a big victim. Many countries are using this kind of malware to spy on other nations. Many unethical hackers are using these kind of things to actually hack into random cell phones. This is what I displayed for the demonstration in ethical hacking, but the same can be misused by unethical hackers. So the end line comes as like, again, we have to raise this big question. How safe is your data online? How safe is your privacy? And how safe are you? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.